The weather is about to take a dramatic turn. A huge weather pattern change is about to set off a chain reaction of high impact storm systems across the United States, including a major flooding threat, heavy snow, a winter heat wave, and even the return of severe weather. The atmosphere is preparing to open the floodgates as a train of storms is set to impact the Pacific Northwest this week. This raises serious concerns for widespread and potentially catastrophic flooding. Unfortunately, this train of storms will not stop in the Pacific Northwest, as these powerful storms will track east towards the Great Plains, Midwest, and Ohio Valley, bringing heavy snow and blizzard conditions to millions later this week. This will create more travel problems on top of what's already been a difficult December stretch of weather. At the same time, another surprising threat is emerging. A sharp temperature flip is on the way, sending much of the country from far below average to well above average temperatures in the matter of days. As warm air surges north, severe storms may return to the Ohio Valley, with damaging winds and an isolated tornado threat being possible. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about this major weather pattern change that is about to happen. Now, there is a lot to talk about in this forecast, but I want to begin with our jet stream. This is what's going to control our weather pattern across the United States over the next seven days, and we actually have a very rare weather pattern that is currently developing. Now, one thing that is happening right now is that we have a very strong atmospheric river event that is developing back over in the Pacific Northwest. And this is very dangerous because what is going to happen over the next few days is that lots of moisture is going to be pushing into the Pacific Northwest, which is going to lead to catastrophic flooding. And what breaks off of those storm systems that impact this area are actually going to move into the Great Plains, Ohio Valley, and Midwest. And this is really going to ramp up around Wednesday and Thursday. And that could actually lead to winter storms and maybe even a return of severe weather for some of you as we go into Thursday. So this is a very interesting weather setup that is currently developing. In the meantime, our jet stream has lifted back off to the north for most of the United States, which means above average temperatures are about to return back over in areas like the Southern Plains and even back into the Southeast. We are going to have temperatures as warm as 10 to 25 degrees above normal. This is coming off of a major Arctic blast that has impacted millions in the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. Eventually by Friday and Saturday, our jet stream will dip back over in the Midwest for a day or two. That'll bring below average temperatures again. A little Arctic blast, but not as intense as the one over the last few days. And then once we get closer to Christmas, things become more uncertain. Right now, the GFS model is hinting at a very active weather pattern right around Christmas along the West Coast, which could translate to the Great Plains if we have a storm system that ejects over the Rocky Mountains. And we'll talk more about that in a future video. And in just a moment, we're going to talk more about the big storms that are coming to the United States. But one of the biggest things that is going to change over the next seven to 10 days are the temperatures. Right now, we still have a large swath of below average temperatures all along the East Coast. Many areas right around 15 to 20 degrees below average for this time of the year. But anywhere in the Great Plains and along the West Coast, it is a completely different story. It is really warm along the West Coast right now. We have dozens of record high temperatures that have been set here over the last week or two. By the time we go into Wednesday and Thursday, that heat is going to start to build even further back over in the Pacific Northwest. And that is going to also go with the rain and snow that is falling in those areas, which is only going to get more significant. And then eventually, as we go into Wednesday and Thursday, we will actually have a really warm pocket of air that is going to make its way all the way back up into the Midwest and the Ohio Valley with most areas, including Missouri, as high as 25 degrees above average. A lot of the snow that has fallen in Illinois and Indiana will be melting on Thursday. Now, the temperatures are not going to remain above average for any more than probably about 36 hours, but either way, we're still going to see some snow melting. By Friday and Saturday, another little shot of Arctic air will make its way into the upper Midwest and also the Great Lakes. This could also bring blizzard conditions and heavy snowfall to those in the upper Midwest and the Northern Plains. And eventually by next weekend, we start to see warm weather return to the desert Southwest and the Gulf Coast. And then as of right now for Christmas, it does look like it is going to be above average for most of the country. So if you are hoping for a white Christmas, it does not appear overly likely as of right now. I don't know if this is going to happen though. Right now, the GFS model is indicating a really significant heat wave right around Christmas with temperatures upwards of 40 degrees above average. I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but I do think it'll at least be above average for most of the United States. And to give you an idea of how dramatic the temperature change will be here over the next few days, these are the low temperatures for tomorrow morning. Most of the Great Lakes in the Northeast will be right around the teens in single digits. It'll improve though by Tuesday and Wednesday, high temperatures back into the 60s and even 70s across the Great Plains. Look at this back over in Southern Illinois and Indiana. We're going to be reaching the 50s and some areas like Indianapolis will get above freezing on Wednesday. Thursday is going to be the warmest day of the week for most of you in the Ohio Valley as temperatures will get back into the 40s and 50s. This will help to melt 
snow. And then by Friday and Saturday, that Arctic air will start to plummet down to the south. Again, it's not going to feel nearly as Arctic as what we've seen here over the last 48 hours, but it will probably at least force you to bring back out those pants and maybe even light jackets for a lot of you because most of you don't even wear winter jackets over here in the Ohio Valley for teens. Eventually, as we go to Saturday and Sunday, we'll continue to see a lot of warm air across the Gulf Coast and the southeast. And then again, right around Christmas, this is where things get a lot more uncertain. Right now, the GFS model is showing some absurd scenario where we see 70s all the way up towards Chicago. I don't think this is going to happen for the record, but if this were to happen, it'd be one of the warmest Christmas time frames that we've ever seen on record. So this would be something to watch for. Now let's talk more about these big storms that'll be coming to the United States over the next week. And a lot of these are going to be focused towards the northern tier of the country. So this is what it looks like right now. We have a big atmospheric river event that is currently taking place in the Pacific Northwest. Unfortunately, there will be a lot of rain and snow for the foreseeable future. This is going to be on pace for one of the more significant atmospheric river events that we've had in years across the Pacific Northwest, especially in Washington, where many rivers have already reached some of their highest levels on record. As we go into Tuesday, that snow event will start to wind down a little bit, and then we'll be watching for a small little storm system to make its way across Canada. Some moderate heavy snow is possible in areas like Saskatchewan and Alberta. And then as we go into Tuesday evening, another powerful atmospheric river event will hit the Pacific Northwest, dumping a lot more rain and a lot more snow. That will be mostly during the second half of the day. And then eventually as we go into Wednesday morning, very heavy rain and snow will continue across those areas, including even Montana, where we have winter storm watches and warnings in effect. And then by Wednesday afternoon and evening, this is where things get a lot more interesting if you're over here anywhere in that black circle, because what's going to happen is that a new winter storm is going to be forming from that energy that's going to be coming from the Pacific back over in the Northern Plains late Wednesday night. Now, the low pressure system to begin with is going to be very intense. 987 millibars is a very impressive low pressure system here in the northern tier of the country. But what's going to happen as we go into late Wednesday and early Thursday is that this will intensify a little bit and begin to bring some light to moderate snowfall from Montana back into areas like the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. On the southern side, there will be a little bit of rain back over in Iowa and even near Minneapolis. As we go into Thursday morning, this will eventually move a little bit further off to the east. So there is a possibility that we could see some blizzard conditions back over in parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, and the Upper Peninsula of Michigan when it comes to all the snow that's already on the ground and the snow that is going to be coming out of this. That is because the winds are very high around this low pressure system, and we know that because you can actually look at the isobars. Those are those little black lines on your screen. That is very tight pressure basically across the board. It's our pressure gradient force, and when that happens, we end up getting very strong wind gusts, and many areas in the Midwest could have wind gusts upwards of 50 to 60 miles per hour on Thursday. Another very interesting part of this winter system is that we also have the threat of even severe weather being a possibility back over in the Ohio Valley. I don't necessarily think the temperatures and the dew points are going to be high enough to really promote much of a tornado risk. If there were to be one, it would have to be back over in very far southern Kentucky or Tennessee, and even then I think the odds of that are pretty low for Thursday. However, I do think at least some isolated damaging winds and some rumbles of thunder are going to be on the table throughout the daytime on Thursday. And then late Thursday, early Friday, the storm system makes its way into the northeast. Unfortunately, if you're looking for snow in New England, you're not going to be seeing much of that out of the storm system unless you're in the higher elevations. Late Friday into early Saturday, more moisture is going to come over the Rockies from this atmospheric river event. More snow is on the table late Friday and Saturday in the northern plains in the Midwest. No winter storm, though, out of that at, as of right now is in the forecast. And then by the time we get closer to Christmas, even more significant atmospheric river events will continue back over in Washington and Oregon, and that is going to continue to lead to some moisture coming over the Rockies. But it does not appear as if we're going to have many major winter storms before Christmas for most of the country. I think, generally speaking, we will be in a bit of a drier pattern for most areas that are east of the Rockies. But if you're over here in the northern plains back into the northeast, that is an area that is still going to remain pretty active over the next seven to ten days. Now, back over in the Pacific Northwest, we are going to be getting absolutely hammered by really significant rainfall. And this is what the forecast is between now and Friday. Most areas, especially in the higher elevations, will be picking up around five to ten inches of rain. Even just west of Washington, there could be a few select locations near a foot of rainfall out of this event. But overall, the entire region here in Western Oregon, Western Washington, Northern California, y'all are going to pick up anywhere from three to seven inches of rain at the minimum. So this is going to be a very significant event. And then as we go into early next week, the rainfall totals will only keep increasing right before Christmas. And again, if you're living near a river, that is where the most significant impacts are going to be felt. Almost 100,000 people were evacuated last week that were in low lying areas. I would not be surprised if something similar happened later this week, especially for those that live near rivers. And back over in the northern
northern plains and the upper midwest even though it's a little too early to tell how much snow is going to fall one thing we almost know for certain at this point is that the winds will be extreme across the dakotas and nebraska early thursday many areas with wind gusts around 50 to 70 miles per hour and then late thursday early friday those high winds will make it their way across minnesota wisconsin iowa but this will definitely cause some problems and it could even cause isolated power outages and blizzard like conditions with any remaining snow that is on the ground it could definitely hinder travel plans so that is something to keep an eye on here and as always thank you all so much for watching today's forecast if you are new to the channel make sure to subscribe down below we'll likely have another video tomorrow talking about that next big storm that's coming so make sure to stay tuned also if you want a personalized video for me for the holidays you can check that out with the top link in the description and we'll see you all again in the next video